and was Hollywoodized. Life's changed, but forever connected. The golden anniversary of the miracle of Milan against Muncie Central. up to Muncie in the Muncie Central Fieldhouse, built in 1928, and they meet for just the third time ever as we relive Hoosiers 50 years later between the Milan Indians and the Muncie Central Bearcats here in Muncie, Indiana. The place is packed, over 6,600 strong, and welcome to our broadcast. Gary Miller and a basketball legend around these parts in his own right, Quinn Buckter, very pleased to bring you this game. And Quinn, the 2004 edition has a lot of similarities to that game in 1954. Milan's a 2-8 team, Muncie Central's a big 4-8 team. What chance does Tiny Milan have tonight? Well, if you had a chance in 54, you got a chance in 2004. But if Milan's going to win, they have the similarities this way. They have seniors on their team, and particularly in Rex Parker, is one of the guys they've got to get to play well. He and Steven Lauer are two guys that score the basketball. They don't have a lot of size, so the quickness has to go in their favor. So the most important thing that they can do is get out and run the ball. They do have some experience. Both of them the two leading scorers in their conference. Now the other similarity is back to Muncie Central in 1954. They were a big team. There was nobody on Milan over six feet tall. And not only are they a big team, their biggest guy is their best player, Jordan Armstrong. Yeah, Jordan Armstrong is 6'6", and so he's got good size on the interior, get down on the block, He's quick to the basketball, so he's the guy that you can look at Muncie Central to go to. Milan's going to have to use that quickness to avoid all of that size that Muncie Central brings to the day. Well, it's a lot like Davy and Goliath. We'll talk a lot throughout the broadcast. The 1954 teams are here in force. We'll visit with some of them as well. Well, let's get introduced to the 2004 edition. Here's the public address announcer, Bob Fisher. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the historic North Walnut Street Fieldhouse. And tonight's game between the Milan Indians and your Muncie Central Bearcats. Here are the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for Milan High School. At forward, a 6'1 senior, number 20, Stefan Laub. At forward, a 6'2 senior, number 32, Matt Swisher. At center, a six-foot senior, number 34, Gary Caudill. At guard, a 5'11 senior, number 22, Sean Custer. And at guard, a 6'1 senior, number 10, Rex Parker. The Indians are coached by Randy Combs. And now, for your eight-time state champion, Muncie Central Bearcats. Forward, a 6 1 senior, number 40, Byron Barnes. At center, a 6 6 junior, number 50, Jordan Armstrong. At one guard, a 5 11 junior, number 15, Josiah Miller. At guard, a 5 10 senior, number 24, Brandon Kelly. And at guard, a 6'2 junior, number 20, Alex Daniel. <laughs> Assistant coaches are Matt Fine, Scott Shepard, and Todd Conklin. And the head coach in his first season, Billy Shepard. Let's see if we can relive history. It's mighty Muncie Central against the tiny Milan Indians when we continue on ESPN Classic. If you put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential, to be the best that you can be, I don't care what the scoreboard says, at the end of the game, in my book, we're going to be winners. Hoosiers, own it on DVD. Hot pants! Hey, hot pants! Uh, Guess who's been counting carbs for over 85 years? One, two, three! Uh, I like hot pants! Planters, put out the good stuff.
The Disciples of Jackie Robinson. There was Jackie. He brought home. February 23rd on Sports Century. Jackie Robinson broke the Major League color barrier. They hated his death. But these players continued the fight. Was there bigotry toward black players in those days? Absolutely. When I hit the home run, the people started listening. Is the battle for racial equality still raging? Who says I'm just in baseball? I don't care what anyone says. Sports Century. The Disciples of Jackie Robinson. A Black History Month premiere. 8 p.m. February 23rd on ESPN Classic. If you're unaware of your credit history, you may be paying higher interest than you should. You could be denied the house of your dreams. You could even live the nightmare of identity theft. Now you can see for yourself if your credit history is accurate at TrueCredit.com. Log on now to find out what type of credit product is right for you and how you can protect yourself from identity theft. Order our special TV offer online now. You get absolutely free. Your credit score, weekly fraud alert emails for a year, and this helpful guide to managing your credit. It's from TransUnion, so you know it's secure. Life's full of obstacles. You just gotta know where they are. So go to TrueCredit.com. True Credit. Manage your credit. Manage your life. Back in Muncie, Indiana, Hoosiers 50 years later as Muncie Central takes on Milan in the golden anniversary of their state championship game. Let's go down to the third member of our broadcast team, Jim Barber, on the sidelines. Jim? Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Quinn. Uh, the whole place is going retro tonight. That includes the media. I don't know if one size fits all, but this is available for those who like to wear it in the press section tonight. Speaking of retro, how about the cheerleaders of Muncie Central who put a lot of time and effort are going back to the 50s, including the hair, which apparently took one lady over three hours to put together. The scores table, while well, it's all bow tie going back to that 54 championship game at Butler Field House in Indianapolis. And speaking of that area, let's go to the front table. And let's go to public address announcer Rob Fisher again. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start tonight's game, we would like to introduce to all of you one of the two officials who officiated that famous game in 1954. Now walking towards center court is 88-year-old Cy Burge, who was a young 38 years old when he got the call from IHSAA Commissioner Phillips asking him to go to the big show to officiate the final game of the 54 state championship. Cy was under the basket when the final shot was made and little did he know the impact that game would have on his life. Cy officiated for over 32 years and has been inducted into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Cy Burge. What do you do, toss it up already? Cybers uh, is still around, and uh, almost everyone in this story is still around to him, Buckner. The great thing about Cybers, he spoke at the banquet today, and he said, you know, if Goliath had beaten David, he wouldn't have been in the Bible. No, there's no <laughs> question about it. <laughs> I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, you sit and you watch uh, around Muncie. I mean, everywhere you went, everyone was talking about this game. They, at Milan, obviously, they talk about the game, if you will, almost every day, if not every day. There you see the advantage of Jordan Armstrong in the pivot against Rex Parker at the jump. They get it down to their big man, and he misses wide. Underneath, it's Kelly. And he's on the line. Yeah, well, with Armstrong, one of the things he's, he's best at is, is on the, in the post. And what they would prefer to do is have him stay there. When he steps out, he's not nearly as effective. You see the pressure right away by Muncie Central, who's coming off, by the way, a big win last night against Marion to win their conference championship. Yeah, it's the first time they have won it outright since 1977. Their coach is Billy Shepard. There you see Randy Combs, the Milan coach. Randy's been there 10 years. Billy Shepard wasn't named head coach until three days into the season. Their coach got dismissed for violating uh, amateur athletic rules, and Billy, who was a former Mr. Basketball in Indiana and a former ABA player and a legend around here, took over, and he's got him uh, in contention to move far in state. 
Take a look at those state championships, they, of which they had four prior to the great Milan Muncie Central game. They've had eight total state championships here. Quite a powerhouse. That's the Indiana State record, and that's why they were Goliath back in 1954. As Quinn mentioned, they've already won four of those championships. Swisher to inbound. Gets it to Parker. See some full court pressure from Muncie. Now, Muncie's going to try to, to, to make sure they can speed the game up on, on Miley. Right there, Daniels got out and pressured the ball, and they got a jump ball with a possession arrow. It goes back to Milan. That's where she inbound again. Almost looked like the picket fence they were set up there for the inbound <laughs> play. <laughs> John Custer almost loses the handle. A lot of pressure from the Muncie defense. Well, that's really what makes them a tough team to play against, because if you get out and pressure the ball, good things will happen. Now, the odd thing about it is that Gabe McCrary, when they were up in the game in 50 years ago, they were up two points. They wouldn't come right. out and pressure because they, they were up. Some people, you know, lay back. Some come out and pressure. He chose not to. Real patient offense here by Milan. Keeping it out in the perimeter. Caudle looks inside to Swisher. And a travel. Another turnover by Milan. A team that can speed you up with defense is always difficult to play against. Milan cannot be afraid to attack. Even though Armstrong is 6'6", neither team has a true center. He likes to play along the baseline. Milan plays a three-guard, two-forward offense. Yeah, they, they, but they like to have, because Jordan's got such size, you want to keep him on the baseline. Kelly misses a long shot, rebound to Fottle. Gets it over to Matt Swisher. Weaves it in the corner. There you go. You got to, they got to get the shot up. That shot wide. Both teams a little nervous. As you can imagine, neither of them have been on national television before. You get a foul on Josiah Miller. I suspect you'll see Muncie Central foul quite a bit because when you start pressuring people, you you lend yourself to a lot of fouls. <laughs> Billy Shepard, <laughs> he's working on the official early. <laughs> Great play in his own right. As you said, Billy Shepard actually coached AAU basketball mm -hmm. and was a, a good AAU coach. And what happened was he has also a high school publication and read that the job was available and was calling to find out who was going to get to be the next ball. Take away jam for Josiah Miller. Josiah. Must have gets on the board first. It's really a I'm sorry, dude. Billy was just calling to see who was going to be the next guy to get the job, and lo and behold, he ended up getting it. Yeah, it's amazing that the guy with his pedigree wasn't sure whether he'd get the job or not. No, you know, as I talked to him today, I agree with you. Here's an Armstrong. Well, it helps when you're the biggest man on the floor. Can you get position? Right there, everyone's behind him, hardly have to jump. Jordan Armstrong in position, pulls it down, goes right up to contact, puts it down. Well, the 52% free throw shooter, but he made that one. And that allows Muncie Central to get into their pressure. Full court traps, Swisher breaks it. Got a man underneath, but Good Armstrong's play. there. Yeah. Nice flip, and Milan's on the board as Sean Custer drives the lane left-handed. Well, I like the fact the recognition was there. Missed one, found the second one. Pull-up jumper missed by Byron Barnes. Rebound goes to Parker. Parker tried to put a few moves on Josiah <laughs> Miller, and he wasn't biting on he that. He didn't move at all. Custer again drives the lane. Swisher's waiting with the rebound and puts it back. Milan stays within a point. Well, they get a little confidence. At least they can get the ball down court. Get a basket or two. 5-4 Muncie Central. Muncie Central in a 4A North Central League. Went 7-0, including the win that Twin talked about last night against another Indiana power, Marion, but they handled them easily. Yeah, Marion is a little down this year. Historically, they have, as you said, been very good. Connell with a great steal, stripped at the last minute by Miller. 
call a foul on Josiah Miller. It'll be his second. I think they well, actually they call out Armstrong. Yeah, they changed and put it on Armstrong. They both were there, and I'm sure that at this point, Armstrong will take it. You can see the quickness, anticipation, get out, get to the ball. See, can you make a play? Yeah, I have, yeah, I have. Whoa! Three! We talked about Lob in the pregame, Quinn. Sure, if he shoots like that, they got a shot. Well, they, they absolutely. They played a two, th uh, Central played a two three zone, and the thing that happens, you're exposed out in the corners, and Lob knocked down the three. This is a two three zone, and a nice little screen out there to get Lob open, and not a lot of people do that. Screen the zone, and Swisher set a nice pick. It's Daniel. He's a nice player. I, mean, he's, I know he's a little unorthodox looking, but he, he actually is a pretty nice player. As I talked to Billy Shepard, he was saying when the, he was teasing him about the long hair and everything, but he understands how to play, and he likes his ability to get plays made. Alex, a little bit of a throwback maybe to the 70s. Oh, he definitely is <laughs> a throwback. So Milan had the lead. Now it's tie at seven apiece. Pull up, no look, Jade bounces off the rim. The Parker's there for a rebound and a put oh, oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Parker and Lauber are both on the board. They've got five of Milan's nine points. Armstrong just way too big inside, but a little too much on that one. And he's fouled underneath by Carter. He's got some size in there. They're having a hard time handling him. One of the things that you, know, you may have to look at is try to front and back him, but the problem is with him, because of his, the length of his arms, that Daniel just, he can throw the ball to the top, Kelly can just throw it over the top, there's not much you can do to keep him from getting the ball. I'm sure he switches that one in. Carter's got three fouls now, so he comes out of the game. First substitution for Milan. Brent Green comes in for him, the senior forward. Brent Green had gotten away from the game for a couple of years, left it three, three years. He's come back. He's a good percentage uh, foul shooter. It's both of his free throws. So Jordan Armstrong's got five. We're tied at nine, and Josiah Miller has provided the biggest highlight so far. It's Hoosiers 50 years later, Milan and Muncie Center. This is the sound. These are the results. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? This is the sound of the PowerFlex by Gold's Gym, the authority since 1965. Gold's Gym gives you one powerful machine with 65 club quality exercises and up to 410 pounds of resistance to build muscle, define muscle, lose fat, all in just six weeks or less to get you the body you've always wanted. Guaranteed. The secret to the Power Flex begins with the swivel flex pulleys that provide you with free range of motion so you can move from one exercise to the next safely. Next, Power Stroke Resistance simulates the natural movement of your muscles and allows you to move from 10 to 410 pounds of resistance with one simple stroke. It's this awesome combination that gives you those ripped abs and more chiseled arms, legs, chest, and back. If you want to look like this, then you need this. PowerFlex, the Gold's Gym technology breakthrough. Call now for free information about how you can get the Gold's Gym PowerFlex in your home for as little as $49 a month. With the Gold's Gym PowerFlex, you get the lat tower, the multi-position bench, hip strap, rowing seat, ankle strap, handles, and space saver design. Be one of the first callers and you'll get the Gold's Gym Power Flex Leg Developer for stronger legs and shapelier hips and thighs. A $200 value absolutely free. You'll also get a workout poster showing you all 65 club quality exercises. Our gift to you. Don't pay $2,000 for a home gym that won't get you authentic Gold's Gym results. This is the machine. These are the results. Can you feel it? Call 1-800-690-9863 to get the Gold's Gym in your home for as little as $49 a month. That's 1-800-690-9863. 1-800-690-9863. Call now. Welcome back to Hoosiers. 50 years later throughout the game, we'll bring you real to real. What was real and what was Hollywoodized? Well, Shooter, the assistant coach 
before Norman Dale didn't exist. And Norman Dale and Marvin Wood couldn't have been much different. Gene Hackman's Norman Dale was an old coach who had been thrown out of the game for 10 years for allegedly hitting an ex-player. Marvin Wood had been an assistant, was the youngest coach to ever win a state title at age 26. Very mild-mannered, very religious guy. So I don't think I could picture anybody but Gene Hackman playing that role, but he couldn't have been much different than the real Marvin Wood quit. Well, it was no question it was very different. Angelo Pizzo, who actually did the movie Hoosier, is a, actually is a friend of mine, and, and what Angelo did, believe it or not, he took that a little bit after Coach Knight. <laughs> Norman Dale's personality was more like Coach Knight, if you will, <laughs> than it was Marvin Wood. Alex Daniel is uh, the sometime quarterback of this team. He's the quarterback on the football team, but he's not going to play next year. He wants to focus on basketball. Isaiah Miller gets it out. I know that feeling. Brandon Kelly just misses. Miller with a nice board inside, and then Armstrong tips it. Kelly. Miller uh, reverses off the glass to give him the lead. And it was the strength of Daniels. You, you, we just talked about him being a football player. He got hit as soon as he got the ball, was still able to deliver it where it needed to go. Parker holding it up front. Loud. Swisher. Parker with a long three, and it rolls out. Got a good-looking Jay there. Got a good look at it. Miller loves to shoot. That rims out as well. Daniel gets the board and weaves underneath. Tries to get some spin on it. And he turns it over. Let's go to Jim Barber with the legend, the referee cyborg, Jim. Thank you, Gary. You spoke about Cy and the way he captivated people the luncheon today here in downtown Muncie. Can't hear you. Cy, as we look back to the game in 1954, why does it so strong today in the emotions of people 50 years later? Well, it just grew and grew. We, we knew at the time, and uh, both of our was working our third uh, tournament, we knew at the time a small school would beat a big school. Well, uh, that's... That's not too uh, unusual, but in the state final it was, in that state final. Then it, uh, we went home, and kept reading about it year, even year after year, and it kept getting stronger and stronger. Then we got to thinking, well, I guess it wasn't, you know, that type of a, a ball game. And now, after 50, I, I'm content now, after an ex-official, that that has to be one of the greatest uh, states uh, in the country that they would ever have. Uh, but at the time, no, we, we, I wasn't surprised. Just, you know, but I, uh, that's why we shouldn't have uh, class basketball. You know, just, uh, yeah, yeah. just because now it can't happen again. And that was, uh, that was the reason that, well, I, I, I played that myself for, uh, in 34. And well, we, sure. we played the final four. We got uh -huh. Logan Fort beat us three points. And then uh, Logan Fort went ahead and won that night. Well, and, uh, and I feel that's probably why Bobby Plump and you are such good oh, friends because oh, he, he doesn't like class, uh, like class basketball oh, either. Passing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary and Quinn, you know why? This, this guy could talk to me all night, but I think we have to send him back to you to capture more of the game here. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, guys. Yes, I is still pretty sharp. He's sharp, and he's pretty emphatic about it. I mean, I don't think there's any question that it is. It is the reason, in my humble opinion, like the Final Four was in Indiana basketball before it was in the NCAA. And as we today look at Brook, um, Bracket bu uh, bracers, busters, right. I'm sorry, bracket busters. That's what this is about. Trying to let the little school get into the big dance so they can do basically what Milan did because I don't think there's any more excitement than to see an underdog find a way to beat, a, if you will, a Goliath. I think that's, that's great, except if you happen to beat a Goliath. Nice jump shot there by Brant Green. Well, you don't even see these games anymore. It's Ty Riddle who came into the game with the long three. His first shot is a big one. Must be starting to spread it out. They build a five-point lead. As I was saying, Quinn, you know, the only reason that Milan's in 2A is not because this town got bigger. There's so many single-A schools in Indiana now that they just moved up to 2A because there wasn't any room left in Class A. You don't even see games like this anymore in the regular season. The bigger schools won't play the smaller schools. There's nothing in it for them. Yeah, and they don't want to run the risk of, you know, losing to one, having known. The, I mean, most of these young people may not know that history, but they do know that there's a time, and the coaches know that yeah. sometimes a, school, a smaller now, school can be the bigger school. Go, go. Parker drives, draws a lot of Muncie Bearcats. A lot of action on that baseline. It really is. You know what I like about Milan, though? 
first of all, no, after out. having made their first shot, they're not afraid, and they stay pretty disciplined in their offense, which is not unlike the team in 54, which actually ran at first and then be oh what a oh, play. shot by Swisher. What a play. As the buzzer goes off. Didn't even touch the floor. No, this is tremendous recognition. He knew the shot clock was down and just caught the ball in midair in an effort to try to make sure he could get it off. You can see he get it right there and in midair lets it go and as it goes, so does the shot clock. So a heads up play, Milan's in it at 16-13 Muncie at the end of our first eight minute high school period. When we continue on Hoosiers 50 years later, we will get today's view of that game 50 years ago. No Danny Boy, no Rose of Tralee, just the greatest Irish bands. All of the very best Irish bands performing the songs that made them famous on one CD. Including tracks from U2, The Cranberries, Ben Morrison, The Pogues, Sinead O'Connor, The Coors, and so many more. Credit card ready and call the number on your screen or log on to www.musicspace.com. Plus, get a free keychain with your paid order. Welcome back to Hoosiers 50 years later. Muncie Central up 16-13 as we start the second quarter. And before we get to that, Jim Barber is going to give us the perspective of today's players and what they know about that game 50 years ago. Long before the present-day Milan Indians were born, their place in history was set. Their lot in life to uphold a legacy. To some, it has been a burden, but to others, an opportunity. It's a big part of life around here. It's, I don't know, sometimes you feel like you can't really live up to it, but it's nice to have something special about your town. Uh, living in this town, it's all you've heard the past uh, six, seven, eight years. I mean, that's, this town's made after, you know, uh, I think 50 years ago you wouldn't even remember it, but such, such a such an amazing story. One of the great ironies is that for all the notoriety Milan has received for winning the 54 state championship, it was the first and only time the Indians ever made it to the title game. Meanwhile, Muncie Central, long remembered as the loser in that historic game, has made it to the state championship on a number of occasions, winning eight titles more than any other school in the state of Indiana. While Muncie Central's current team takes more pride in its own basketball legacy, it does not mean the Bearcats lack knowledge of the 54 Classic or appreciation of tonight's opportunity. I know it's probably the most talked about, most known game in Indiana history. Everybody knows about that game in Indiana. I remember when they um, aired Hoosiers on ESPN one time, they had Shaq when they are talking about how uh, he, uh, that game helped him want to play basketball. And I mean, it just put Indiana on the map. My grandma has a friend that talks about the game a lot, and the um, only thing she talks about really is that is how Central is supposed to have nine banners instead of eight now. I think it's a really good chance for us to show that um, history doesn't always repeat itself. Well, so far, Ty Reynolds, who is about to inbound the ball for Muncie Central is getting his way. They're up 16-13, but Milan's hanging right in there as we start the second quarter. Brown on the wing. Kelly cutting in. Riddle. Got hit, but tossed it off. He's, it's because he's so big and strong. I saw the same thing you did. It, it never faced. Kelly loves to shoot, and he nails that one. 18-13. Nice, nice lift on that jump shot, Gary. Nice trap, full court pressure. But Milan breaks it pretty easily. I mean, the problem Milan's going to have is that they're not, unless they shoot exceptionally well from the perimeter, they're going to have a difficult time to get any shot, getting any shots on, on the interior. You know, their coach Randy Combs knows Muncie Central pretty well. He saw the game last night. He saw him play Kokomo a couple of weeks ago. 
Billy Shepard, the Muncie coach, said, you've seen my team more than I have. <laughs> Long miss by Parker there. And the ball goes over to Muncie. They've known about this game. It's been kind of in the works as they saw it coming up when, for about two years, but mm -hmm. they had no idea, when you look at Billy Shepard talking things over with the official, that it would turn into this, a nationally broadcast game. Well, there's no question about that. I mean, it, it, it turned out it was just a thought, actually, by one of the members of uh, that, one of the people that knew about the team and just said, you know, let's have a game. And two years later, they not only get it, but an article is run in a national newspaper. And then the ESPN calls them and wants to get involved in it. And it's been obviously a big deal for them. Riddle with another long three, and it's off the rim. And Milan has to get those kind of rebounds to stay in this game. But Brown is a strong rebounder underneath. Coming off the Muncie bench, Kelly misses outside, but Armstrong not blocked out, and now he gets fouled from behind. The hard thing to do with Armstrong, and, and that's what happened on that particular play, is you can't block Armstrong out from the uh, backside, and that's what Brant Green was. That's Green's first foul. Armstrong spent a lot of time at the free throw line in the first period. Now he's going to get a little breather as Andre Jones comes in. Muncie with an 18-13 lead. Kelly looking to inbound. Swisher playing tight defense on Daniel. <laughs> he plays more like a fullback than a quarterback. Oh, there's no question about it. I mean, and on the glass, Milan is, is really getting beat badly. We talked about the experience at the top of the show. We talked about them being undersized, and they're getting to be beat decidedly on the glass. And you can see you can get to the rim. Brown with a nice drive and miss. Swisher got the board and then gets fouled by Brown. Byron Barnes back in. His great uncle, mm -hmm. Jimmy Barnes, is the guy who was guarding Bobby Plump on that fateful shot 50 years ago. March 20th. And they all they told him, Jimmy Barnes at that point, was to make sure you don't go for the pump fake. But, the, but Jimmy Barnes was very much aware that he had a great jump shooter, if you will, in Plunk, who hadn't played well in that game as Kelly knocks that down. Plunk played well actually in the game before. He had 26 points, but he yeah. got held to 10 in that particular game. It was the worst game he ever played. Yeah. But he hit the one shot that mattered. That's <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, his life is, and all of Milan has never been the same. And a tie-up. Possession goes to Milan. Muncie playing very aggressive defense, and I'm a little surprised when they're, they're shooting outside more than Milan is. Love well, those threes. I, well, they, you know why? They've got confidence that if they miss them, they, they're big enough that they can go get the ball. Change defenses here. They oh, a turnover, and Riddle's alone. Well, it goes into the easy layup. They changed defense, they, and that's why Coach Randy Combs is taking the time out, because they went to a 1-2-2 two, two trap, and, and I don't mean a, a sit-back flat zone. They trapped it, and Milan wasn't ready. So with the timeouts by Randy Combs and Milan as they try to regroup, let's go to Jim Barber for more on that 54 game, Jim. Yeah, an amazing game, guys, and I think you've commented it before about the fact that Bobby Plump was able to hold the ball as long as he did. Interestingly enough, in the 2004 Milan attack, they also have the stall game or the spread, or as they call it, the cat and mouse. And I talked to Randy Combs prior to the game tonight, and I said, well, what about using it tonight against Muncie Central? He said not likely. He wanted to go more deliberate. His team is down 10, and it's not likely to see it now. But they used it in the 99 state tournament of the sectionals, and the cat and mouse won the sectional form so it's there guys if they ever need it well the cat and mouse that randy combs uses uh the name has been changed a little bit it's what uh, north carolina and the uh, great point guard phil ford used to run and many of uh, coach Man, James oh players the four corners and you could do that because you didn't have a shot clock as part of the equation long missed by Milan and muncie central with a follow oh, by oh. jones well, that was Byron Barnes, sorry. It's his first bucket of the night. 
Laub has been pretty quiet tonight for a guy who averages 20 a game, as does Parker, who has the ball now on the far side. Well, they play, pay particular attention to those two. Trying to run plays, and Muncy's just not letting them. Now an offensive foul for a turnover. When you're a good team, one of the ways, the, the best way, as a matter of fact, to beat anyone is because of your defense. As a matter of fact, that's what happened with, to, to Mila when they were playing. You take a look at Billy Shepard. see the scores behind there. If you weren't with us at the beginning, it's not that they're that rural and backwoods here in, in Muncie and Milan. We're uh, in honor of that 54 game. Everybody at the scores table is wearing bow ties tonight. Yeah, they got some nice bow ties on. Muncie starting to spread it out. Up 25-13 as Kelly misses a long shot there, and Milan's going to have to start hitting some of theirs here in the second quarter. It's a three-point game at the end of the first quarter. Milan, what they, they've got to get good looks, not turn it over, and, and all they can do on the other end is make Muncy Central get one shot. Uh, that's, see, that's an unforced turnover. Man, that's exactly what you can't have. Matt Disbro throws it into the Muncy bench. They haven't scored yet in the second quarter. Armstrong's back in the game now, so things are only going to get tougher. Milan's only taken two shots this quarter. And they've turned the ball over six times now, three times as often as Muncy, as Daniel brings it up. Armstrong in a high post now. Daniel drives and Swisher can't keep up with him and draws the foul. But Daniel is, is surprised. He does have an understanding. Billy Shepard told me that he, he has a feel of an understanding. I mean, he read that one right away and knew he was going to get a foul. At the very worst, they thought he was going to get to the rim. Brandon Kelly inbounds. And Josiah Miller shows his touch. Got six now. Yeah, he's undersized, but Josiah Miller's also the one we saw through the dunk down. That was a good-looking jump shot there. He's got a couple of brothers playing college basketball. Stifling defense by Muncie Central. And the members of their team from 1954 have to be loving what they're seeing tonight. <laughs> Swisher misses a long three. Miller brings it up. Just drives right down. And Armstrong's there for the tip. And it's just right now it's just too much speed for Milan. Milan still hasn't scored in the second quarter. He's now 16. Armstrong with a save, and Swisher steals the ball. Knock it down. Looking for a three off the rim. Milan can't buy one in this quarter. Turn around is good. Lauf gets his fifth points of the game, and a little nice little turnaround. An answer by Kelly. Yeah, you can't come out and let him get an easy shot like that, I guarantee you. Hey, Michigan State! Michigan State! <laughs> Randy Combs calling his Michigan State play. It's very clear what he wants. He wants his Michigan State play, and they like to run screen and roll at Michigan State, and that's exactly what they've run here. Five! Stay down, Jordan, stay down! A little bit of a flex set there to make sure they can get a shot from Parker or Lau. Off the front of the rim by Sean Custer. And ahead of the pack, it's Miller. He's going to go against Swisher, who hammers him, and he's still got the ball to fall. Oh, that was a tough play there because as he was going to the basket, it, it looks like he was going to get a charge on him, and he had the side, the strength. Again, Josiah Miller, watch him go up, take the hit, get it off the glass. Pretty athletic play there. Josiah, 77% free throw shooter, and he converts the three point play. As we take a break with. Central up 34-15. Where are they now? Well, Gene Flowers was the top scorer for Muncie in the 1954 game. He was an All-State player in football and basketball. He's retired after 32 years in education here in the state of Indiana. He won titles at IU in 57 and 58. 
Oh, honey, come quick. What? Look at this Denny's French Toast Slam on TV. Oh, you know, that does look good. Oh, yeah. Are you getting hungry? Yeah. Hey, how about we head over to Denny's right now? It's just $4.99. For French Toast? That's a great deal. Let's go. The number one movie in America is 50 First Day. Got it? Moving out. One, two, three. With all the madness. Oh! And more. That was pathetic. Shut up. 50 First Day. Rated PG-13. The New England Patriots have won one of the greatest Super Bowls of all time. Patriots take the lead! We live the thrills of the Patriots' exciting championship season with Sports Illustrated and the great new NFL Films DVD, The New England Patriots Super Bowl 38 Champion. Plus, this special Sports Illustrated hardbound commemorative. This individually numbered classic offers an inside look at the Patriots' second great Super Bowl season. Both are free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated, giving you 56 issues for only $1.59 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. Cut! Touchdown, Patriots! This Wilson Super Bowl football, designed exclusively for Sports Illustrated, is also free when you use your credit card. You can't get this one-of-a-kind collectible anywhere else. All now, you'll get all three great Patriots collectibles free. Don't miss your chance to celebrate the NFL champion New England Patriots with this fantastic Super Bowl package, available exclusively from Sports Illustrated. Call now. Welcome back to Hoosiers 50 years later. Mighty Muncie Central up 34 to 15 on Milan late in the second quarter here. I want to remind you that weeknights on ESPN Classic catch the Emmy and Peabody Award winning Sports Century. Join Chris Fowler for the profiles that reveal the people behind the legends and take us inside the unforgettable games that became part of sports history. These are the stories you don't know, told by the people and players that do. That's Sports Century every weeknight at 8 Eastern and Pacific, only on ESPN Classic. Milan needs to get something going here. You know, even in 1954, when they didn't expect a blowout, it, it was David versus Goliath, but Milan had been to the semifinals the year before, mm -hmm. and they had just beaten Oscar Robertson's team, Crispus Attucks, that afternoon. Well, and, not, and, and from that, they learned a lesson that the thing they, they had to be better at was on the defensive side of the basketball. And that's, that was one of the challenges for them. And this Milan team has that challenge as well because when you, you have trouble scoring the ball, you've got to be a possession team. Uh, but obviously, Oscar Robertson's team didn't win that year. Oscar was a sophomore at that point, but they eventually came back uh, following, uh, not, not in 54 and 55, and they won a state championship. Nice move to the hole by Parker, but it's off the rim. Their shooting's been awful in this second quarter. Armstrong with another rebound. He's got nine. That's as many as Milan has as a team. He's been outboarded 21 to nine. Well, that's why they got McIntosh in on it. McIntosh has at least got size, and then it was just his overall size that wouldn't allow uh, Armstrong to cleanly get that pass that he dropped out of bounds. Andy McIntosh, a seldom-used player. He's only got one basket all season, but you're right, Quinn. They need some size in this game. Guys like Swisher and Parker are really playing above their heads. They're having to handle so much of the load tonight, but I love how aggressive they're playing. It's an oversized, and then they're a talented team, the team that's got far more talent than Milan does as well. McIntosh going to take a shot. Oh, he misses a three. This is where the, the, the challenge is, this transition. Jimmy Barnes, great nephew, Byron Barnes, drives all the way and coast to coast it. Now a 21-point lead. Sean Custer gets it inside. Parker with a nice feed to Swisher, and it just won't fall. And another rebound for Armstrong. That one they were looking for Armstrong. That's why he couldn't get the ball to go down. Kelly puts a fake on Parker. Now he feeds it inside to Armstrong, who tips it to himself and gets hammered. <laughs> McIntosh says, <laughs> Rusty. I talked to Randy Combs. I said, what are you going to do with Armstrong? He's an all-state caliber player who's getting recruiting letters every day from IU and a lot of the big schools in the country. He's only a junior. And he said, well, I got three big men with five fouls apiece. <laughs> and that's what you have to do to him. You just have to keep, you have to try to wear him out. But he's hitting his free throws tonight. And he's been active on the glass, knocking down his foul shots. Very spiritual young man. He gave the invocation today at the banquet. We had both current and the old teams reunited. Rebound by Swisher off the free throw miss. 
final minute of the half. As Milan tries to get a little bit closer, get this lead under 20, but they are having trouble buying a bucket. Looks like Kelly will slow it down for the last shot. Yeah, that's a 15 lead. Yeah, they're definitely going to try to get that last shot. I see the middle is open. So Rex Parker has to be careful. Whoever's they're guarded in the middle, you got to be careful. Because the quickness will come into play. Then up top, Swisher and Parker coming up to meet him. Bobby Plump will be holding the Last ball at this point. seven seconds. It goes off the rim, but Armstrong's camped underneath. Can he get it off? Got it Knocked off. out of bounds to Milan. That's it. Yeah. And the clock has gone off. So mercifully for Milan, the first half is over. But what an impressive performance.